Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. What I want to talk to you guys about today is this fish right here. This is my personal best. Uh, we've been fielding some questions lately about big fish. Uh, people asking what our PBs are, our personal bests. So Tim and I decided that we're going to tell you the stories uh, of both of our biggest bass. So today I'm going to tell you about mine. This fish, 17.2 pounds. Uh, 29 and a half inches long, 27 and three quarter inches around. She's massive. There's, there's no way around it. This fish is huge. Uh, a lot went into catching this fish and it is a very, very unique story. Uh, actually, there was a Bassmaster article written about it because it's such a strange story. And we'll give you a link to that. I don't know if you guys have ever read that, but if you haven't, I'll, I'll put a link down in the video description so that you can click over and read the story, but basically it's gonna tell you the same thing I'm telling you here. Uh, quickly, leading up to this fish, I would love to tell you that I came out of a gate with a big bait, went out there and stuck a giant bass. I wish I could tell you that. Uh, the reality is the blood, sweat, and tears that went into three years of swim baiting without a bite is kind of what kicked off tactical bassin in a way. Uh, there wasn't a place where you could just go learn how to throw a big bait, how to, how to bass fish properly, the right rods, the right gear, what it was going to feel like. So basically, I did everything wrong for three years. And I say that I never got a bite, but actually, once I finally got a bite, I realized just how much I had screwed it up. So we'll say I never caught a fish for three years. I never knew I got a bite. Uh, but we'll fast forward until about a week before this bass here. Uh, I caught her, oh, what's it been, 11 years ago now? So about a week before this fish, I finally got my first noticeable swim bait bite. I was out at um, a little lake near Sacramento, California, had a good buddy with me. We were not on a big elaborate bass boat. We were on a 12 foot aluminum boat that we had dragged out of the back of my truck. Bottom was all roughed up from getting dragged in and out of the truck. Uh, but we were out at the lake and we were making our rounds. He was throwing a Senko, I was throwing a swim bait. And uh, actually I got a little bit ahead of myself. That's the day that I caught the fish. Let me back up a little bit before that. I was out exact same scenario, same lake, but he wasn't with me. I was throwing a big bait. Uh, I had thrown a Castaic hardhead for years and just struggled and struggled and struggled. I finally got my hands on a, a Huddleston. They were brand new at the time. Uh, it took like a three month waiting list to get the bait in. So I uh, was out at the lake, just chucking a wine in that thing. I didn't know what I was doing. Using, I kid you not, a seven foot medium rod. Like the rod that I would throw a Senko on now. That's what I was using. Seven foot medium, 20 pound mono, and that was all she wrote. And the only bait caster that I thought might be able to handle it. Uh, and I was reeling along and I got like the faintest little tick. And I just kept reeling the rod kind of loaded up and next thing you knew, oh my gosh, I've got a fish on. And I landed my first ever swim bait fish after three years and it was exactly three pounds. Uh, she had that whole entire bait choked, man. Uh, that taught me so much because in that moment, I had spent years trying to get a swim bait bite, chucking that thing, just assuming that I was going to be reeling along and just, I was going to get bit. It never happened, right? I got the faintest little tick. And all of a sudden, all these wheels in my head started turning. And I'm thinking about all the times I was real and something funny happened. Back then I had stinger hooks on my Huddleston, so I had belly trebles on it. All the times I'd throw out real back, nothing would really happen, it'd feel kind of funny, but then I'd get the bait back to the boat and the trebles would be pulled out. But again, there was no tactical, right? There was no place I could go to find out what I was doing wrong. 
Uh, I was so clueless. So in that moment, in that little three pounder, this freaking light bulb went off. And I'm like, I have been throwing away so much time, so much money. Uh, so fast forward a couple days, I come back to the lake, same lake. Uh, I'm out there again by myself, launch the boat, going around, just chucking. I didn't know what I was doing. So literally all I would do with the Huddleston is I'd have my boat like 40 feet off the bank. I'd throw it up to the bank, hit, and just start reeling. That's all I would do, just reel that trout back. And I'm reeling along and just tick, and I set, and it was an 11-2. I got that fish in the boat, and man, I had, I had a meltdown. Uh, it was not my first double digit, it was actually my third, but it was the first one on a swim bait. That fish meant so much to me. I went straight back to the ramp, waiter, photos, the whole bit, called everybody I knew. I called my brother, he was the last call. Uh, I'm talking to my brother, I told him I was gonna go home, and he's like, why are you going home? It's like 7.30 in the morning and you just caught an 11 pounder. Go back out. So I did, I went back out, uh, I'm shaking. You know, all those years had, had just finally come together in this great big fish. Go back out, come around the corner, I go maybe another 100 yards and tick, set up on it, and it's an 11.8. And I got that one too, back to back 11 pounders. Weighed it, photographed it, called my brother on the phone, said, you're not gonna believe this, I got a bigger one. And then I said, I can't do this, man. I can't handle it, I'm shaking, I'm stressed out. I literally put my boat in the back of the truck and drove home. Back to back 11 pounders. Dude, I was home at like 10 o'clock in the morning. I was a moron, uh, but that's learning. Right, so all that was just building. All of a sudden I had confidence and, and that's, that's a key thing, right? Getting bit is hard enough, but once you get bit, especially once you get bit by a giant, it's kind of like a domino effect. They just start dropping after that. Uh, so fast forward to what I was talking about before. Come back to the lake, that's this day. I had a friend with me. There we are in the 12 foot aluminum boat. Uh, Brian's up in the front of the boat, I'm in the back driving a little, little tiller trolling motor. Uh, he's throwing a Senko and I'm throwing that Huddleston, man. Just knowing I'm gonna catch another big one. We went around this entire lake and it's not a big lake, but it's not little. It took like four and a half, five hours to just work the shoreline. We never get a freaking bite. They get all the way back around to the dam. I kind of line up along this point going towards the dam, wind up, make a big old bomber cast with that Huddleston. And man, it's amazing the way things work out because looking back now, if I had hooked this fish the way I was trying to hook it, there's not a chance in the world I would have caught her. Seven foot medium rod. My rod was too light to control her. My line was too light to handle her. I was using little tiny, tiny stinger hooks. There was no way I was gonna get her. But you know, God had a plan, man. I, I line up, fire this cast, and right at the very end of the cast, I backlash and tink, line breaks. I'm not joking. Sails out. The bait splashes in the water with like 70 or 80 feet of line attached to it. It was an ROF 5 Huddleston, the slow sink. Back then, man, you couldn't get another one. It was gonna be months to get another one. So I kicked my little trolling motor on high. I'm sure we looked like idiots. And I'm like screaming that we gotta catch up to that bait. So trolling motors on high, we're running after the line. Luckily it's the slow sink, so it's going to bottom. I'm able to catch up to the end of my broken line. I get a hold of that line and I just start pulling it in. And this is where you're like, no, this is BS. And that's why I bring up the Bassmaster article because this really did happen. You can read it there too. Uh, I'm, I'm not joking, I'm hand lining, right? And clear as day on my hands I feel a tick. So I didn't even know what to do, right? I just kind of pulled on it and it loaded up, man. Uh, I had one point of the smallest stinger hook 
stuck between two gill rakers. That was it. That was it. I had no idea what I had on the other end. 20 pound mono, me and a fish, and I just started pulling. And it was a disaster. It happened in February. So we're in full gear. It's freezing cold. It was a stormy day. I'm pulling line and there's like line wrapped everywhere. And thank God this fish was a jumper. Cause when you get a giant on, they're one of two things. They either jump or they dive. And if she'd been a diver, she would have cut my fingers off cause there was line everywhere. But I'm pulling this fish, pulling this fish. She jumped three times and I had no perspective, right? At that point, the biggest bass I'd ever caught was a 12 pounder. Uh, all I knew was it was big, really big. So I'm pulling, she's jumping and I'm, I mean, it was a disaster. I can't even tell you how bad it was. I'm screaming at Brian, Brian's screaming at me. I'm yelling for a net. So this fish comes in close to the boat and I, I tell him to give me the net. So I've got the line in one hand and the, the net in the other and she's trying to dive and it's a little tiny tin boat. So she dives under the boat and I'm like looking for her and she jumps behind me on the other side of the boat. And I, man, I will never forget. It's like slow motion in my mind every time I think about it. The, the boat was a piece of junk, right? We dragged it in and out of the truck all the time. So it was rough on the bottom. So it was like it was on rocks. Man, I hear her jump and I turn and as I'm spinning, the line breaks. Just straight up breaks. And I just stick the net out and she lands in it. And I got this fish in the boat. Uh, pulled her into the boat. We had no idea what we were looking at. Uh, I'm looking down at this thing and I'm like, that's gotta be 15 pounds. It has to be. I had no idea. When we finally got this thing on dry ground and got her on a scale, she actually weighed 17.8 on the scale, 17.8. Uh, but I weighed her a few different times and I felt more comfortable at 17.2, 17.2, because that's what she weighed most of the time. Uh, it was incredible. Now the sad part of this story, and you know what, it's, the whole story is a disaster anyway. So the sad part of this story is that this fish passed away. This is a skin mount. Uh, it was February, it was freezing, cold. We photographed her, weighed her, the whole bit. I was so excited. Get that fish in the water, worked with her. She totally revived. I release her. I've got photos of her as she's swimming away. She cruises out to deep water and then just rolls over. Man, I was so heartbroken. I got in the water, got that fish, brought her back. I released her three different times when she finally just there was nothing left, right? She didn't have any color anymore the last time. She was dead. When that happened, I'd been in the water with her for over an hour. Uh, there is no way around it. This fish and I did battle. Uh, absolutely an incredible fish. I wish she had made it. At the time, I was so heartbroken. I wish I didn't even catch her. But the reality is she was a really, really old fish. Uh, she had lived her life and just one more fight was more than she could take. But truly a remarkable fish. And it started, I mean, it started the rest of my life from there, right? Another, I don't know, 50 or 60 double digits since then. Tactical bassin came about from there. Some of the best people I've ever met in my life really came out of this, man. And uh, pretty awesome fish. We wanted to share that with you guys. Hopefully soon, Tim will get an opportunity to tell you his story as well. But wanted to take the time to tell you guys that. We appreciate you watching the channel, uh, interacting with the content that we do for you. We appreciate the support. We'll talk to you soon. Now I'm going to move to the outside piling. There's one. And when I hit grass, I'm, I'm popping it. And when this, 
It's like dragging something by a, a cat. They're not looking at the bait. When that thing rips through the grass and that thing pops up, the fish, it's just an instinct. They eat it. So I don't think they care about seeing the braid. <laughs> I think that it's just something that triggers in their head. They're reacting. You're getting that bite. When you 